What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are unboxing the Batman from InArt. It has been almost two years since this figure was on pre-order, and I know many of you have been waiting for it day and night. So today, let's have a close look at this figure from all perspectives. This Batman has two different looks, the Batman and Bruce Wayne. Both looks came with two different editions, the standard edition, which have sculpted hair, and the premium edition, which have rooted hair. And the InArt also released a bat signal as one additional accessory. If you have enough budget, you can go for the deluxe edition with rooted hair. It has the rooted hair Batman, Bruce Wayne, and the bat signal. The one I have here for this video today is the deluxe edition. Firstly, the box. On the very outside, it came with a brown shipper. It's super big and heavy, almost 10 kg. The shipping fee will hurt your wallet just even more. Inside of that, there is a big silver box with some info of which edition you have purchased. And finally, inside of that, we have three smaller boxes for the Batman, Bruce Wayne, and Bat Signal. All boxes came in this red and black theme color. When you lift up the outer layer at the back side, these lines will create an illusion, making these bats look like they're flying, which is very interesting. On the box surface, besides a Batman logo and some movie coats, one really cool thing is the front cover is made with thermal material. You can leave your hand printed on by pressing it. It will disappear when it cools down. For this effect to look better, you can blow the cover with cool air for a while before pressing. And then let's check out what's in the boxes. For the Batman, on top we have a manual, certificate, and a thank letter. Beneath that, we have the body, hands, head, and one empty cowl. Next layer, we have all the gadgets and weapons. The bottom layer contains the base, cape, and the Bruce Wayne head sculpt. For Bruce Wayne, on top we have these paper stuffs as well. First layer, we have the body, hands, head sculpt, some cash, and one car key. Bottom layer, we have the base, some letters, and some protest signs. For the bat signal, inside is a hard foam box with velcro straps that Queen Studio often use for their statue products. The bat signal came in with the light and three small stands. First, let's dive into the Batman. After getting my hands on this body, my first impression was this body is quite heavy. Without the head, cape, and belt, it already weighs around 360 grams. After putting on the head, it stands around 31 cm tall. About the bat suit, the upper shirt and pants are separated, but the shirt is connected with part of the lower inner paddings. The entire belly area is quite soft when you press it. This costume is made with full fabric. The color is a bit greenish, which is pretty close to the actual prop. And this chunky thingy on the surface are very nicely made, with enough three-dimensional look. And I like these stitching lines. They don't look big or thick. The ratio is great, and also they don't look that obvious. This costume has several kinds of fabrics. First is the one that covers the largest amount of the body. Second is this one with linear surface. They are under the arms and legs areas. These two thin stripes on the legs are made with soft rubber. They are glued on the pants. And for these crossed ropes, including the one at the back, they are made with two long ropes from top to down with many crosses. And for each cross, they go through these little green things on the sides. There are four zippers on the back. These two larger ones are real. And the smaller ones are printed but they look very good. And also, here we have two small fake zipper pulls on top of them. Under the forearm armors, there are two elastic cords and this fish scales looking pattern. Now, let's check out the armors. Parts that can be removed are forearm armors, upper arm armors, shoulder armors, neck cover, and chest armor. Shoulders, neck, and chest armors are attached with Velcro. 
The forearm armors are also in this greenish color, but there is a layer of dusty effect on the surface, which is pretty cool looking. You can see that on these three straps as well. The quality is also very good. All the curves, holes and stuff are sharp and clear. And with a bit of worn off effect on the edges as well. The grapple guns can be detached for switching parts. These arrows are made with metal, I love it but they cannot be detached from the armor. And you can see at the tips and bottoms, the details are very nicely made. The upper arm armor has nothing too special. It has several colors and some scars on the surface. This buckle and the armor itself are made as one piece. But the buckle on the legs are real, made with nylon and metal. The shoulder armor is made with hard plastic, with fine painting and quality. Chest armor is plastic as well, with some gradient effect on the edges. You can feel these cuts with your fingers. The neck cover has nothing too special, but the size is accurate. You can almost put in two fingers. The battle ring is full metal. You can detach it from the chest just like the movie. It is painted in black, silver, and yellow. The tips of this thing are very sharp, and the blade could actually cut things, so better be careful with it. The boots and covers also have this dusty effect on the surface, the wrinkles look pretty realistic, as well as the fake zippers. The shoelace and buckles are made as one piece. In terms of color and detail sharpness, these are not as good as the rest of the armors. It is pretty obvious that this bat suit has amazing quality. All the small details are well captured. I'm just gonna say three things that I think can be improved and make it even better. First is the worn off effect of the suit itself. On the edges, there are small color fades, but to be honest, they are not obvious. Comparing with the shoes and forearms, the suit looks a bit too clean, as well as the upper arm armors. I wish these worn off and dirt effects could cover the entire costume, not just partially. Second is these scratches. They are all painted in silver with similar length and thickness. I think they don't look that real. The last one is the battle ring. It appears too clean just like the suit, and also with these silver scratches. But most importantly, the magnet is not strong at all. It can be dropped by just shaking with a little bit of force. Now let's take a look at the head sculpt. The head and neck are separated. Neck and body is connected with magnet, and neck with head is connected with a ball joint. It is painted with a layer of dust as well. The fake leather texture and stitching lines all look very nice, and these cuts have a great depth. About this lower face, let's save the skin tone to the Bruce Wayne part. Right now, let's just take a look at the appearance. I think it looks very nice. You can definitely tell that's Pattinson's job. The quality of this is unbelievable. The skin texture and stubbles are super sharp. You can literally feel them by touching. All expressions have a part of the nose and cowl. They are attached with strong magnets. Two additional expression includes one with half open mouth and one angry face. They look pretty good too, but the teeth is the only thing I don't like. I think they look a bit like plastic, because each tooth is not independent enough. 
especially at the gaps. And also the surface is missing the shine of real teeth. The eyes are rolling eyeballs. Remove the face and you can adjust them. One little problem I experienced with the eyes was when I push in the neck, the eyeballs will be pushed to another direction. And I had to readjust the eye for several times. To avoid it, you need to bend the ball joint backward first, push the neck in, and bend it back. I'm not sure if this is a common problem or not. Let me know in the comment if you run into the same thing. Now I want to talk about the body proportion. A lot of collectors were saying the body shape of this Batman looks a bit too good. And now having it in my hand, I would say yeah it's true. This figure's shoulders are a bit too wide, and waist is much thinner than it should be. With these long legs, the entire ratio appears to be too perfect. In the movie, you can see the upper body is much chubbier than this. But the arms are great, there's no bulky arms problem at all. Next, the Bruce Wayne head. This head came in with a little container. The base is this silver liquid looking thingy. But the cap is super tight, you will have to give it some patience while opening for the first time. The head is locked on the base. You need to first turn it to the left, and then you can plug it off. There is no joint between the head and neck, and it is also attached to the body with magnets. There are three things I really like about this head. First thing is the skin tone. Like real Caucasians, the skin color is very bright but with red underneath. For example, on the cheeks, nose tip and foreheads, which makes the overall appearance very realistic and convincing. In art even added a light layer of sweat on the skin. The eyebrows and eyeshadows look amazing too. But the lips, I think they are a bit too pinky. Could have been better if the color was lighter. Second is the quality of this head is on another level. Skin texture is super impressive, especially at the eye sockets. With the skin tone I just mentioned, this head is absolutely amazing. Third is the rooted hair. The hair is super thin with correct length and curly appearance. It is already styled with hair gel, so I don't recommend redo it yourself. Personally, I am satisfied with how it looks. There are chunks of sculpted hair at the hairlines. And the line on top of the head is also very neat. I don't see any flaws on the hair from any angles. In terms of the likeness, I am not gonna give any personal comments. Let's just spend a few seconds and see it for yourself. This head also have rolling eyeballs. You need to open the back side of the head to see it. But do be really careful if you bought rooted hair edition. Make sure the hair don't get pinched while open and close. And most importantly, do not disconnect the top. It will very likely ruin the entire thing. The only problem I have with this head is the size. I think it's a bit too small, especially after putting it onto the body. And with the ratio problem I mentioned earlier, this figure's overall proportion looks too much like a comic book character. I mean, it's super nice if you don't care about how realistic it looks. Now the cape. The cape is double layered, that means it's quite thick. Outer side is like soft plastic sheet, with a nice shine on it. The lower part has some dirt effects. The size of this cape is pretty large, with wires around the edges and inside. The neck part has faded color, and with this folded, layered appearance. The cape is good for floating. If you like it with natural draping appearance, you will have to spend some time for it. To install it, just remove the chest armor and attach it with velcros. The last component of this suit is the belt. The belt itself is made of soft rubber. 
These small bags are real with foams inside. They can be opened. These two are made with hard material. They are fixed, but you can see the adrenaline shots are already inside. These two at the back are made with fabrics. This ammo is pretty well made. Both quality and coloring are good. There are two metal parts on this belt. One is the center buckle. It can be easily locked and unlocked. The other metal part is this black ring. All items on the belt can be moved around. They all look dusty and again, the suit looks too clean next to them. And these bags with the ammo can be removed. The gun holster is connected with the belt through this buckle. You can untie them, but I don't recommend doing so, because it's so small and fragile. These two straps can be tied on the legs, and the holster has velcro on it. Now let's take a look at the accessories. The default hands are relaxed hands, additional ones have a pair of fists, a pair of trigger hands, two different gripping hands, one hand for holding the gun, and one with open palm. These hands are well made in terms of recreating the gloves. These gloves are also dusty. Left hands have this little watch on it. But all hands don't have the silver zapper at the fingertips. These hands have magnets inside. They can be installed quite easily. The empty cowl only has the upper part. The overall appearance is same as the head sculpt. The only difference is this empty one is not so black. And we get all the envelopes and gift cards that appeared in the movie. The envelopes look pretty nice. This white one even has the fireproof text. But they are quite thin, and the back side is not glued. The gift cards look exactly like the ones in the movie, with same contents inside. But the printing is very blurry, and color saturation are not so good. These two extended repo guns are same as the shorter ones, and they have a bit flexibility. They also came with four hooks, two long ones and two small ones. They are made with full metal and can be put into the guns. The extra battering, one is straightened and one is half folded. They are as sharp as the one on the chest, so be really careful with them. The handcuffs are full metal too, has silver and black in color. The metal section can be slightly folded. And the ring parts can be moved as well. Small details on this thing is fine, but this parting line is very obvious. The pistol is pretty well made. These tubes on the side are metal as well. All the crafting is on point. and the ammo can be pulled out. There are two extra ammos, one is for the gun and the other one is for the belt. The UV light and flash have nothing special, you can hold them in hand or hang them on the belt. This laptop only comes with the premium edition Batman or the deluxe edition. This thing is pretty big, on the outside it has nothing too special. But inside, the metallic paint, worn offs and letters are all very nicely made. Especially the letters, super small but clear. The screen is like real screens, black in color and with reflection effect. The conversation on it are printed, you can feel it by touching. The adrenaline shots are same as the ones in the belt, with not much details on the top. My favorite one is this flashlight. It's very small but with real light-up function. 
there are some wore off paint on the outside too. The light bulb is those for fishing. To turn it on, just press the ball. And lift it back up will turn it off. Here is the model info of this light bulb. You can buy it if the battery ever dies. The base is in the appearance of the bat signal, but with no articulations. There are worn off effects on the surface too. And some protruding parts around the edges. On the front, it has a movie logo. This base is also magnetic. Turn this cap at the bottom, you can adjust the position of these magnets. Loosen these screws, and the magnets will follow the feet, so you don't need to adjust them every time you want to change pose. The figure can be quite stable if you just let them do perfect standing, but I wish in art could include a support for some more dynamic poses. Lastly, the articulation. Because the neck cover is quite high, the Bruce Wayne head tilting up and to the side can only reach about 10 degrees. Lowering the head can be 20 degrees. The Batman head is pretty much the same. Arms can lift up to 90 degrees for all forward, side, and backward. Forearms can bend a bit over 90 degrees. Torso can lean forward and backward about 20 degrees. Sideway tilting about 45 degrees. Legs front kick can reach 90 degrees, backward kick 10 degrees, side kick 80 degrees. Lower legs can bend 120 degrees. Ankles have a great range of motion for all angles, but the connecting joint is pretty short, so for certain angles, the feet may come off. And that's all for the Batman. Guys, before we continue, if you liked the video so far, please press the like button or subscribe to this channel. It will be really helpful for me to create more contents like this. I appreciate all your support. Now the Bruce Wayne. Let's first check out the costume. There are the shirt, tie, suit jacket, and this coat. The figure is wearing a lot, but it doesn't look funky at all. The overall appearance is quite fit and neat. Unless you are a super perfectionist, otherwise I think there's no need to make too much adjustment for the costume. About the material, the shirt, tie, and suit have nothing special. The fabrics are just standard action figure clothing materials. But this coat is quite fancy, super soft and even look pretty expensive. Under lights, there's a layer of shine on the surface. The stitching works are fine, stitching lines are also very small and unnoticeable. This belt buckle is made of metal. And there are wires at the bottom of the coat. All these buttons are real, so better not untie them, especially the one on the suit. These buttons are super small, it will drive you crazy if you ever need to put them back on. The pants and shoes are pretty normal, and inside we have a pair of socks. One thing that really impresses me is these golden pins of the Wayne family. They are made with metal, micro small in size, but with super fine details and crafting. There are four of these in total, two on each arm. The head sculpt is same as the other one, just with different hairstyle and facial painting. Again, let's take a few seconds to observe it from different angles. And here is a quick comparison of the two heads.
After putting it onto the body, I think this figure's overall ratio is better than the Batman. Although I still think the head is a bit small, but the thin waist is covered by the coat, so it looks just fine. About the accessories, the default hands are relaxed hands. Additionals include a pair of half-open hands, two different gripping hands, and a hand for holding the key. The gestures are very natural. The paint job for these hands are super fine. You can even see the blood veins and small scars. Even the white parts of the fingernails are well replicated. And we have some dollar bills and one car key. The key is very small but with good quality. These envelopes and gift cards are same as the ones in the Batman. Then we have these protest signs, two with question marks and two with slogans. They are made with hard plastic and with fine cutting around the edges. You can make them stand with these paper supports, bend and just connect them with the double-sided tape. Lastly, the base. By looking at the color and symbol in the front, it looks like a piece of ground of the Wayne Mansion. It is plastic and empty inside. There are a lot of cracks all over the surface. The cap at the bottom can be opened as well for adjusting the magnets. Above the articulation, head can tilt up and down to 20 degrees. Sideway 45 degrees. Rotate 360. Arms can lift to the side 90 degrees. Forward and backward 45 degrees. Forearms can bend 90 degrees. Torso tilting forward, backward, and sideways are all at 45 degrees. Legs can do front and side kick at 80 degrees. Backward kick 10 degrees. And because the feet is glued with the shoes, you can do some big range moves without having them come off. And that's all for the Bruce Wayne. Next, the bat signal. To install the entire thing is pretty easy. Just plug these three things on and that's it. And here is the size info for this light. The bat signal is fully covered in this rusty paint. It looks very realistic, but if you touch the surface, it actually feels very smooth. On the handles, gears and stuff, they are well made and look nice too. Visually, they don't feel like plastic. The lights can be moved for both directions, and there are some added stops. Because here is a horizontal bar, the bottom of this light has a groove for fitting it. All these folds have articulations, you can rotate them one by one. There's nothing else have articulation, so be careful at the parts like the handles and wheels. To light it up, you need two AA batteries. Rotate this cover at the back and you will see the battery compartment. The switch is at the side. The light color is a warm color, but since the cover is not fully transparent, it's more like a matte surface. Therefore, you won't be able to light up the bat symbol. And that's the wrap of this review. I know a lot of people have been complaining about this Batman's production time, cause indeed, we have been waiting for it long enough. Let me know what you guys think about this figure in the comment section. Are you satisfied or do you think it can be even better? I hope you all have enjoyed the video, if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.